Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the seventh video in the STM32 Modbus series, and today we will see how the master will modify a single and multiple coils in the slave device. This is again going to be a continuation from the previous video, where we programmed the STM32 to respond to the queries regarding writing single and multiple registers. In today's video, the master will send a request to modify the coils in the STM32, and we will program the STM32 to handle this request. Basically we will be working with the function codes 5 and 15, but from the slave perspective. The function code 5 is to modify a single coil, whereas the function code 15 is used to modify multiple coils at once. As mentioned here, the master can modify a maximum of 1968 coils at once. This is going to be the same project we used in the previous video. I have added a few things to it, and we will only discuss those things. Here in the main file I have added the function codes 5 and 15. We will call the respective functions for each code. We are going to modify the coil database, which I defined in the previous tutorials. Let's take a look at the writing single coil. Here first we will extract the address of the coil, which the master wants to modify. If the address is greater than 199, the slave will send an exception. This is because the database is defined for only 200 coils. Next we will calculate the start byte. This is the byte in the database, where the modification will be done. Here each byte contains 8 coils. Next we will calculate the bit position. This is the shift in the start byte. For example, if the master wants to modify the 14th coil, then the start byte will be 1, and the bit position will be 6. Next comes the data bytes. The master sends two data bytes. If the data bytes are 0 cross FF, followed by 0, that means the master wants to enable the coil. Similarly if the data bytes are 0 and 0, that means the master wants to disable the coil. Any other values sent by the master does not have any effect on the state of the coil. Here we will look for the next two bytes in the Rx data buffer. If the bytes are 0 cross FF, followed by 0, that means the master wants to enable the coil. So we will add a 1 to the bit position in the start byte. Similarly if the two bytes are both zeros, we will add a 0 to the bit position. Say for example, the master wants to write a 1 to the 14th coil. The start byte is 1, and the bit position is 6. So we will shift the 1 by 6 places to the left, and add the data with the start byte. Similarly, if the master wants to write a 0 to the 14th coil, we will shift a 1 to the left by 6 places, then negate the entire data, and perform the end operation. I hope you understood how the writing is taking place here, as this will remain the same even in case of multiple coils. Now the coil has been modified, so the slave will start preparing for the response. You can see the response format in the top right corner. Here the slave will send exactly the same data to the master, so we will simply copy the data from Rx buffer into the Tx buffer, and send it to the master. The CRC will be calculated in the send data function itself. We will see the working towards the end of the video. Now let's see the function to write multiple coils. You can see the master's query format on the top right corner. Here we will first extract the address of the start byte. Then calculate the number of coils requested by the master. If the number of coils requested by the master are greater than 1968, the slave will send an exception. This is as per the Modbus standard. Then we will calculate the address of the last coil. If this address is more than 199, the slave will send another exception. This is because we have only defined the database for 200 coils, whose address ranges from 0 to 199. 
If everything is good so far, we will calculate the start byte. This is the first byte in the database, where the modification will start. Then the bit position is the position of the coil in the start byte. The index position is to keep track of the bit position in the Rx data buffer. I have created an index variable to keep track of which byte in the Rx data buffer we are reading. The current value is 7, because the actual data in the Rx buffer starts from the byte 7. The approach is going to be very straightforward. We will read one bit from the Rx data, and depending on whether that bit is a 1, or a 0, we will enable and disable the coil. Here we will shift the current byte in the Rx buffer, by the index position. This will extract the bit from the Rx buffer. If the bit is a 1, we will enable the coil, and if the bit is a 0, we will disable the coil. I have already explained how we do that, in the single coil section. After modifying each coil, the index position and bit position values will increment. Once the index position is greater than 7, the index variable will increment, so that we can read the next byte in the Rx buffer. Similarly, when the bit position is greater than 7, the start byte will increment, so that the modification can be done for the next byte. Since we are reading one bit at a time, this for loop will run as many times as the number of coils requested by the master. Alright let's prepare the response for the master. The response format is shown on the top right corner. Here we will copy the first 6 bytes from the Rx buffer into the Tx buffer. These contain the slave ID, function code, address of the start coil, and the number of coils. Finally send the response using the send data function. The CRC will be calculated within the function itself. Alright let's build and debug the code now. Here I have added the coil database in the live expression, so that we can see the changes. I have switched the data format to binary. The data here is as per what we have defined in the database. In the master software, we have to click the right button, and this new window will allow us to write the data to the slave. Let's start the testing. Say for example, if the master wants to modify the third coil. Here you can see the function code is automatically set to 5, because the master is writing only one coil. Here I am setting the value 1. You can see the actual data is going to be 0 cross ff, followed by 0. And if we send a 0, the data is also 0 now. No matter what value you set here, the software will only send ff, followed by 0. You can see the current state of the coil, it is set to 0. And once the master sends the request, the coil has been modified with the new value. Let's say if the master wants to modify this coil here. This is the coil number 65, and its value is 0. Let's say the master wants to write a 1 to this position. Here you can see the value has been modified to 1. Let's write a 1 to the 66th coil. Here the 66th coil has also been modified. You can only see the modified values in the live expression, and they will not be visible in the actual database. The master can also reset the coil by writing a zero to the respective coil position. So the single coil has been working well. Let's test the multiple coils now. Say for example, if the master wants to write eight coils, starting from the 65th coil. Here we have eight rows to write the data for the coils. Let's input the values, for the respective coils. I am just entering some random values here. As per the 8 values we entered, we have the data byte 0 cross D9. Keep track of this byte here. You can see the data in the database has been updated. If you start from the most significant bit, we have 1101, 1001. 
This is exactly the same as the data stored in the database. Now let's say the master wants to write 10 bits, starting from the fifth coil. Here I am just sending one for each coil. This is the fifth coil where the modification will start. Here you can see the modified values. Let me change some of these bits to zeros. Here you can see the updated result for the 10 coils. Before we wrap up this tutorial, let's read these coils and check the values the master will receive. Here the master wants to read 10 coils, starting from the fifth coil. You can see the data received contains 5 ones, and 5 zeros. This is indeed the updated value, and not the one which we stored in the beginning. So I hope you understood how the master writes the data to the coils. This is the last video of this series for now. If I come across something else, I will make another video, but for now this is the end of the Modbus series. The link to download the code is in the description of the video. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.